Next on BYUSN, where should BYU football's focus be in finding more four-star players for transfer portal or high school players? Plus, Eric Mika on his triple-double and tales from the St. Mary's rivalry. Huh? It's coming up. The story behind the show. Now, welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, January 26th. I am Jerem Jordan, alongside a man who does not have his own St. Mary's face, Jason Shepard. Or do you? I do not. That is that is a Spencer Linton thing. Yeah, we got to bring that up probably on tomorrow's show, I would guess, before St. Mary's at home I would for think the final so. time. As a Look, I mean, we can bring it up anytime we want because it's that glorious. <laughs> it is. But we don't need. he doesn't need to be on the show for us to be able yeah. to bring up the St. No, Mary's no, face. No, no, no. He's out tomorrow as well. He'll be back Saturday for the pregame show. But uh, that, that was a face that certainly... Uh, Made waves at the time. I was like, what is going on with it, your face? It's still making waves. It's how waves. we all feel thinking about the suit. It is. It is, a, it is a, an outward representation of how we all feel on the inside. Of an inward this. symbol. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, on today's show, what is BYU football's best avenue for getting four-star players? Plus, as I mentioned, Eric Mika joins us to talk hoops. And is he the new triple-double king? And uh, here's one of my favorites. What do linger longers and NIL have to do with each other. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, we're talking about it. Here are today's headlines. BYU running back transfer Aiden Robbins underwent wrist surgery yesterday. On his Twitter saying, yesterday I underwent wrist surgery. For the betterment of my future and career, I played 90% of last season with this injury. And after an abundance of prayer, I came to the conclusion that surgery was best. Now on the road to recovery, I am excited for what this year has in store. He'll be as involved as he can in spring ball, but he's not anticipated to be physically out there practicing with that injury. Women's basketball hits the road for a matchup tonight at St. Mary's. BYU had its seven-game winning streak snapped last Saturday and enters play in third place in the conference at 6-3. and three. You can watch the game tonight, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time on the WCC Network. Number 12, men's volleyball loses in three sets. Number 6, UC Irvine. Mix Romanis and Capona Brown led the way with 12 kills apiece. Same two teams Friday night, 10 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. The New York Jets hired former Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett as their new offensive coordinator. Denver fired Hackett last month after going 5-12 and 12 in his only season with the Broncos. He will now lead the Jets offense and we hope third-year quarterback Zach Wilson. Hackett was previously the offensive coordinator with the Bills, Jaguars, and Packers when they scored the most points in 2020. Yeah, led the league. Uh, you hope that uh, the Jets can go that direction as Absolutely. opposed to what they Let's had before. that direction versus the other. And conspiracy theory uh, with Hackett a little bit later, I'll share. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. So better players equals better teams. Uh, it's not everything, but certainly something when it comes to uh, college football. Cougars have always been able to get a handful of really good three-star players. Uh, five stars are hard to get, but we always signed a couple in the past. They have one on the roster right now in Kingsley Suamatia. So four stars sort of becomes the pursuit in recruiting for BYU as they enter the Big 12. More of those guys. So Shep, is BYU more likely to get more four stars through high school recruiting or the transfer portal? This is a really interesting, and obviously the transfer portal is getting bigger and bigger, and it's becoming more prominent. And honestly, it, it, when it first started, it was more of a luxury. Now it's a necessity. It yep. has to be part of it. With that said, and first of all, let's go with the numbers. Let's go with what BYU, and, and let's look at this since 2016. So essentially since Kalani Satake became the head coach, what has BYU done in terms of four-star transfers and four-star high school recruits? Basically, and if you round up or round down, BYU is basically getting one of each. You're getting essentially one four-star transfer a year since 2016 and then one four-star signee per year. So right now, first off, before we even get to which one is better, you got to get more than that. Whether you actually yeah. believe in what the star system is, sure. because certainly every four-star is not going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. BYU has made quite a, uh, a living off of two and three stars. But you certainly want more because whether you believe in it or not, the talent, uh, talent evaluation of this player is considered higher than others, and you're going to bank on that. So I, I think for what the transfer portal is, most times you're probably looking at getting these guys for a year, maybe two. In theory, if you sign a four-star high school player, the hope is you're getting them for two, three, maybe even four. So I think BYU probably has a better chance of getting the guys out of high school this way. 
than they are, and I think that's probably the better way to go because in theory you have them longer in your program, at least you, you hope you do. This is all going to boil down to what BYU does in terms of wins and losses in the Big 12. That's why it's even more important yeah. to get these four-star recruits and these four-star transfers in because your level of competition is going up and you're going to be facing teams that have a significant number of four-star recruits both out of high school and out of the transfer portal. So I, I think it's probably the answer is probably out of high school, and I think that's probably what you want because it helps build the foundation and they're there in the program longer. But you need both, and that's all going to be predicated on how BYU does in terms of wins and losses. Yeah, a lot to unpack here. So first, um, I, I agree with several things you're saying. I uh, disagree with a couple, but let's chat. So one, the stars. It's hard, it's hard to like go all in and be like, this means everything. Sometimes it's off, whatever. Um, you know, BYU has, has made a living out of the following non-four stars. Tyler Algier, Blake Freeland, Brady Christian, Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, Blake, uh, Clark Barrington. They've all come in as non-four-star guys. They entered, uh, exited as four- or five-star guys. So it's not everything, but it's certainly something. So incoming players that BYU gained uh, that are four-star, according to 24-7, Eddie Heckard and Aiden Robbins. Um, incoming high school players, Jackson Bowers, Siale Sarah, also four-star guys. That's great. Um, the average in the Kalani Stocky era, as you mentioned, 1.85, so about two, about one of each. Let's compare with Utah because Utah – is in a place where BYU wants to get, which is winning a Power 5 conference championship. Let's be honest. They're, they're playing at a really high level. It'd be nice to see BYU do it quicker than 11 years, but I'd take it in 11 years as well. Utah is getting uh, 2.74 stars a year. Early on, it was minimal. In the last six years, it's 3.8. So they're getting four, basically double what BYU is getting at this point. And you think, well, what's the big deal? It's only two players. It's two players per year. It's two more players on the field that, that you sort of, a crew here. Now, people do transfer. And, and ideally, like you said, hey, out of high school, you build the foundation. To me, it's like the, the jar with the rocks and the sand analogy. The, the rocks would be the high school players and the sand would be the transfers. But you got to win now. And I, I actually think it's easier for BYU to get four stars out of the transfer portal than high school. I hope that it, it equals out a little more later. Yeah. But I think getting a kid in Slovis type guy out of high school is harder than getting Keaton Slovis as a transfer. I think some of these quarterbacks uh, and running backs, and who, they see that, oh, BYU is actually a spot for me. We're out of high school. Maybe that wasn't the right time or fit. I, I think the transfer portal is BYU's best bet for getting the best possible players. Now, development is a huge part of what BYU does. We're sort of assuming, okay, if you get a four-star, they come in and they contribute. Isaiah Moa is going to be a star uh, for BYU. Got, got hurt. Um, you know, and, and barely played um, this year. It takes a second sometimes for these guys. A transfer plays immediately, Jason. That's why I almost, I almost, uh, you know, sort of lean that way. But you need both, as you mentioned, because Isaiah Moa needs a year, year and a half, two years. Then he's going to be a baller. There's others who, unfortunately, uh, have transferred out who are four-star kind of guys, like a Logan Fano and so on. You're going to lose some. You just hope that you net gain yes. on the positive side of that. Interesting. More on that a little bit later on in the show, too, by the way. <laughs> yes, the Athletics. Not a <laughs> fan of uh, what happened with BYU. So let's, let, let's say BYU starts to get three to four, like gets to that Utah level. Which is a four significant stars a year. jump. That means you've got 12 to 16, you know, after three or four years on the field um, total. That means six to eight on each side of the ball when you're playing. You, you add to those these two and three star guys that develop for BYU. Like I mentioned, BYU has been excellent at developing non-four-star guys into NFL guys. Now you're talking about a team that can compete for a Big 12 title. And you do need a five-star in there occasionally. I don't care how it comes. Like It used to be like, hey, out of high school, da, da, da. You, you take Kingsley Suamatia for Morgan yeah. if you can get him. And BYU does an excellent job of maintaining relationships with people so that later, if they need a change of scenery, BYU is available. Think about that for Kingsley. Didn't get him out of high school. What if BYU had burned that bridge? Aiden Robbins, what if they had burned that yeah. bridge? Aiden, Aiden almost came here last year, by the way, but BYU signed Chris Brooks. So Aiden Robbins goes to UNLV. There are opportunities there, and the, and the kind of guy and guys that Kalani Stocky and his staff are make it so that people want to come here. Now BYU is going into the Big 12. We hope that recruiting takes an uptick. And what we're really talking about is that you add a, uh, like two more of these dudes, four stars. Again, 
the evaluations are not only not always perfect. Correct. But uh, in, in fact, some of the hi most highly rated guys in BYU history in recruiting didn't even end up finishing here. Like Ben Olsen's number one, obviously, bounced to UCLA and so on and so forth. You go through like the top 15 and you're like, seven of these dudes did not even get to their junior year. here. It just happens sometimes. But I'm excited about what we hope is adding one or two more of these guys a year, and I think that'd make a big difference because four stars always at least yes. start. Well, and look, you, you referenced what Utah has done in their progression since joining the Pac-12 and sort of where they are now. And right now they're sort of at the pinnacle of where they have been within the conference with obviously the back-to-back -back Rose Bowls. But if you look, the, the, the most – Four-star transfers that they've signed came back in 2021 when they had six. That is a crazy yeah. number to get in. This year, from a signee standpoint, it's their high of seven. So you look in 2022 and 2023, they basically signed more four-stars than they had transfer in as four-stars. So I think that sort of, at least in my mind, sort of backs up my argument that at the end of the day, if you win, which Utah has done its most winning recently, if you win, people are more prone to want to jump in earlier. Right now, the, the situation with transfers, you have one year to play. You're going to pick the best system. You're going to pick the best situation for you. When you so that's, that's where BYU is getting some of these guys now. If they can start winning consistently in the Big 12, I think you start to get these guys much quicker. Therefore, I think it probably happens more in the, in the normal high school recruiting circuit that you go through. I think that's, that's the hope, at least. Maybe right now it's got to be the transfer portal the most yes. because you need to win yes. to then get more incoming yes, freshmen like correct. a Jackson Bowers and a Cialia yep. Serra uh, and others, right? BYU is going to recruit better. It's just how much better and how quickly will these guys have an impact. Because uh, it's hard to make a massive impact as a freshman in college football, but we expect a couple of those guys that I just mentioned to be uh, massive contributors this year. We'll, we'll see what that looks like exactly, but kind of as backups, Jackson Bowers, four-star, top 300 guy ESPN. Can he come in and be the number two uh, to Isaac Rex? We'll see. When it comes to basketball in this conversation, by the way, it's really interesting because BYU is all in on the transfer portal uh, in men's hoops. And you got to win now. You can't, uh, you can't, can't miss. Um, B BYU's three transfers that they brought in have all shined in different ways throughout the season. But the consistency of that group, it's been tough. And you're hoping that, okay, I, I called it a long time ago, and Dallin Hall's going through it. Uh, leaning on a return missionary the year after they get back, there's going to be a lull there that just always happens. And unfortunately, Dallin's in the middle of it. Hopefully he comes out of it. Saturday night, um, struggled a little bit recently. And it happens with every player, but with the return missionary, it's just tough, two years off. We know what that's like. But it, it's interesting in basketball that they are way more in on the transfer portal in this regard. They are also trying to get the incoming yes. freshman. I'm saying, not saying they're ignoring that piece. But to win now in college basketball, the transfer portal is a bigger deal in hoops, and you can't miss on that. Like, whatever BYU does going into next year, which there will be overhaul, I'm – you know, every year it feels like half the roster's gone, even though there's only two people that will run out of eligibility in Rudy Williams and Gideon George. I'm interested to see what hoops looks like next year because you have to hit in the portal. Well, look, and the other part about this, whether it's high school recruits, whether it's transfer portal, and again, whether you believe in four stars or you put a whole lot of stock in, in the rating itself, other people do, and by other people, I'm t I mean other programs certainly do because there's rankings that come out of it. Why, why wouldn't and, you, by and, the way? And players care about it. Yeah. There is a mystique. If, you, if there's somebody that's recruiting you and you look at all the four stars that are on their roster currently, that's, that's like, oh, all this other talent sees, sees something in them. Maybe I should too. It can be a deterrent sometimes where you sometimes. might be like, oh, oh there's too many. I can't play. Especially a quarterback. But, you know. but I think that there is, there is something, whether you believe in it or not, the fact that if you can get a lot of them, it does prop up your program. It does nationally. Better players. Recognition. Better you teams. get recognition for it. Yeah, bu has got to stop being in the 70s in, in uh, recruiting ranks. They need to get in the top 50. And that's not saying a lot. Top 50? Yeah. Come on. Can you be better than Fresno State or whatever? Let's go. Our question of the day is this. Should BYU's focus be on recruiting four-star high school players or transfers? We're talking about football. Mike Jones on Twitter. Best players they can get. doesn't matter where they come from. 
It, I think it does matter. I, I think the, the transfers are ready now. Uh, high school players are awesome too, but it takes a sec. And high school players that go on missions, it's like a four or five year deal. They get back, they need a few years, and then they contribute. We're talking about that like fifth year after high school. It takes a minute. Can BYU afford to wait five years in the Big 12? Like you need transfers and incoming freshmen. Ron Grover on Facebook. Four stars and fill in with transfers, then try and keep them in the program long enough to develop. Just think, if BYU can get four stars and develop, now we're talking. Now we're that's, talking. That's the hope. About first-round guys. Yeah, yep. that's the hope. That's the dream. Certainly what we're uh, hoping for moving into this next chapter. Okay, continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Join us Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time for BYU Sports Nation game day ahead of men's hoops against St. Mary's for the final time as WCC members listen to the game on BYU Radio. Watch on ESPN2. My conversation with Eric Meek is coming up, including the story behind the St. Mary's choke sign as he's still aiming for the NBA. They're playing with and against the NBA's likely top two picks next year. This is BYU Sports Nation. father started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. something else. You have to be able to break through those hard moments when it hurts the most. Whatever you think you're capable of is true. You're a fighter. Hold your head up. You know what you're capable of. We're all proud of you. That's what makes a champion. Let's go! Memories with Eric Mika, BYU. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio B. Your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play. -play. Jerem Jordan alongside Shep. Well, Eric Mika has been globe-trotting for a while now to leaving BYU following his sophomore season. It's taken him all over the globe, including su suiting up for Team USA. And it's St. Mary's Week, so we've got to talk about the Gales with them and much more. Here's the new Mr. Triple Double. What's up, Eric Mika? It's been a minute. I feel like I see you uh, once a summer. I go watch Open Gym. Uh, it's it's you and Yoli and and uh, TJ and the guys, and then it's the, the old crew. Current crew. Yeah, it's that's always fun to watch. Uh, but how's how's the G League, man? Uh, you're hanging out in Henderson. Uh, yeah, you uh, you get a triple double, stepping on Kyle Collins with turf here. Uh, yeah, was, how's it going, was, man? With with all these uh, <laughs> people calling me Mister Triple Double, I was thinking Kyle might. Um, <laughs> take offense to that consider he probably since i got one what three days ago he's probably already gotten another one in japan yeah uh, i think he just got one as we sp are speaking yeah right now. like right now i'm watching no he he gets them all the time so i can't quite take over that name um but yeah henderson's been awesome we love living here the team's been a lot of fun you know it's such a unique dynamic being on this ignite team you know way different experience from the last time I was in the G League, um, but super enjoyable. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, we're loving it down here. So walk us through um, how you kind of 
got to this G League because two years in Italy, Germany, G League, China, spell with the Kings, Serbia, France. You've been all over, man. Mm -hmm. And then you ultimately yeah. come back to the G League. And this is the most unique G League team that, that exists, it seems like. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a, it's a testament to relationships in basketball and, and the people that you know um, and, and timing because last year we tried to make this work, but it, it, it didn't work. You know, we signed with a French team, um, I think, a week before we would have signed with this team. Um, but we're happy that we came this year because it's, it's in Vegas, which is so close to our home. Um, versus last year's in Walnut Creek, which was a little, you know, so just a little bit farther. Um, but yeah, it, the, the GM of this team was an assistant GM for the Kings um, when I was in Sacramento and, and the head the head GM for the Stockton Kings. And so, you know, we, his name is Anthony McClish and we stayed in touch and, um, you know, we're really good friends. And so when he sort of took over this thing as the GM this, this last year, um, you know, he threw it out there for me. And after two years of, I've mostly been injured. Um, you know, last year in France, I had, I had a wrist surgery. And so I was out from November to the rest of the season. The year before that in Belgrade, I was out with COVID for almost two months. And then I broke my right elbow, you know, so I've just been battling all these injuries, you know, great spots, great teams, you know, um, and, and it's been a lot of fun, but when you're hurt, it, it just, it just sucks, you know, being so far away. And so, you know, just wanting to be back home a little bit closer with our son, um, you know, getting more games under my belt in one season, uh, cause the G league, you know, they play 50 games. Uh, it, it, it just kind of made sense. And it's been a lot of fun. Talking to Eric Meek on BYU sports nation, you get to play in some cool situations. Obviously this mm -hmm. team is, is built to like, cater to get guys to the next to the NBA draft and to so you playing with Scoot Henderson what's that like and then you played against Victor Wenbenyama what was that like yeah. yeah both uh both very cool situations you know um playing against Victor was was uh was cool because you heard so much about him uh start, you know going back to last year um I played against him in France as well uh, and then even seeing his growth from last season to this season was cool he's he's definitely gotten better and what I liked about him was he played in both games. And what I mean by that is he played really well in the first game. I, I don't remember his stat line, but he, you know, he crushed it. He showed everyone that he's a, he's a real number one, um, you know, pick potential pick. Like he, ha he has that, um, you know, ability to be, to go number one and not, you know, be some fluke, but then he played in the second one. Cause he was, he was mad that he lost and, you know, despite his agent and, his team and I'm sure his, his counsel telling him, Hey, you shouldn't play really even this season, you know, you've shown what you need to show, you know, he wanted to play cause he lost like he, he's a gamer, you know, he likes to play. Um, and he's not going to sit out to protect his draft stock or anything like that. And I, I really like that about him. And that's, you know, same goes for Scoot. He's the same way. Like he, uh, after his big games, he could have sat out. After his um, start to the season, he could have sat out. Um, you know, he got a concussion. He was out for a couple of weeks, but he was he just wanted to be back on the court. Like, he loves playing. Um, he's a super, super good kid that works harder than anybody on the team, you know, and, and he's the second youngest on the team. So, um, you know, it, it's been a lot of fun playing with him. I'm really excited to see where he ends up. Um, you know, at one or two, you know, depending on what, what teams need, you know, they're very different players. So, um, you know, there's this consensus that it'll be when, when Benyama, which it very might well be, but, you know, Scoot, as a lot of people will say, would be number one in a lot of other draft classes. Like he, he's the real deal. And I think he's going to be in the league for a long time. You're at the point of your career where they're kids now. Yeah. They're kids. <laughs> You're getting old, we man. Have, we, have, we have one guy who he's supposed to be a senior in high school. He's turned 18. That's a, that's a kid. Season. That's a kid. Yeah. That's a kid. Um, but that's what makes, you know, I tell everyone that's what makes Ignite so fun is you have at the beginning of the season, you have a 17-year-old and you have a 39-year-old all on the team and, and everything else in between. So, you know, a lot of different levels of experience. Um, 
you know, you have guys that are super, super raw and young in the world of basketball. And then you have guys that are really experienced that have played all over the place and made a name for themselves. So being right there in the middle for me has been a lot of fun. You still hoping to make the NBA again? Yeah, I mean, that that is part of the reason of trying to be here is it's a really good platform to to get a call up. Um, you know, call ups happen every year in the G League and being on a team without any affiliation, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like you can be picked off by anybody. Um, so yeah, it's a hope. I wouldn't say it's like the primary goal of coming to this team just because you just can't rely on on call ups. They're, you know, far and in between and it's right time, right place. You know, there it, it's you know, okay, what team has a big that has a super similar skill set to mine go down, you know, get gets hurt, gets cut, gets COVID, whatever it is. Um, you know, you're really kind of just waiting um, to see what happens. But uh, like I said, couldn't be a better spot to, to be waiting in. And you played uh, with Team USA, which is cool. Is that going to happen some more? It was awesome to follow you. Uh, get to play in, what, Puerto Rico on the 4th of July or something? Right? Yep. Yeah, we were in Puerto Rico, Cuba, um, I mean, Vegas, and then Colombia this last summer. Um, so they actually they did invite – me to come back and play in this last window for the world cup in February. But we, I say we, because me and my teammate, John Jenkins, who was also on team USA um, and is on my team with, with ignite. We, we decided that we're not going to do it this time. Just the logistics of, of this trip are insane. They're going to, um, they're doing like a training camp in Houston and then overnighting down to Uruguay playing against, Uruguay and then they're going to overnight down to Brazil and so just doing that with a training camp all in the middle of the season was just a lot so we ended up um, deciding not to do it uh, but but it was a tough decision because as, as hard as it would have been in those 12 days it would have been a lot of fun it's it's really awesome playing for them you're not an Amazon package so this is not this is not going to happen exactly yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's quite the trip that would be eventful and uh, extremely tiring I saw yeah. in a video that the G League released that your hidden talent is now ceramics. You've taken some classes. We making some pottery, dog. Now, like I said in the video, <laughs> it's not my hidden talent yet. You're working, but, I hope, but I'm working on it. Yeah, it, it, like I, I, I've taken a couple of classes. I have a lot of fun doing it. I'm horrible at it. It's not easy. Um, but I, I would really like that to be my hidden talent. So mm. I guess that tells you where I'm at as far as hidden talents. Because yeah. I'm hoping for one. I don't even have one. <laughs> it won't be hidden, though, because I just brought it up. Uh, yeah. It'll just be a talent. Yeah, they just put it out there for the whole world to see. Um, <laughs> you know what would be awesome yeah, if I said, I mean, though? Just, just having a little creative outlet is all I'm looking for. Yeah, everybody needs that, whether it's uh, music or art or Yeah, I whatever, don't right? have it. I don't have it. Hey, for now, right? We're all working on it. Yeah, I, we have some shelves on the set. If we had, like, a piece of, like pottery from eric mika that would be <laughs> unbelievable so once you get to the point where you're super comfortable with him yeah just like, yeah i made this for you guys. making like anything but like a a penny tray or <laughs> a small soup a bowl. penny tray like i put my thumb in for like a minute and then i was good yeah so I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's i'm sure it's more uh complicated when i can make anything half decent there will be one on the show like, okay i love it i love it okay yeah. you're always playing saint mary's saturday by the way so we got to talk oh. about saint mary's uh yeah. this is at home this is at home. This is the Thank last you, home game against St. Mary's. They'll go to Moraga later. Famously made the choke sign after a win against yep. the Gales. How do you feel about the St. Mary's rivalry and, and what what consumed you in that moment years ago? Yeah, you know, I was a kid. There's that word. <laughs> I, I was so mad. I remember I was just so mad because these fans, you know, it's a small gym when you when you play there. And you know, to me, as a freshman, you don't know, like, the landscape of of the conference. You don't have, like, individual agendas against team. You know, I didn't, I didn't realize that there was a rivalry. I didn't know they were historically a really good team. Like, they were just a team that was making me mad. Like, like <laughs> I didn't know who they were. I didn't care who they were. I was just in a small gym, and these two fans were yelling at me the whole game you know, telling me that I was, uh, that I was overrated. I was a bust. And, and I, I remember being in foul trouble. And so they kept doing the choking sign to me. These were like two guys in the, in the student section. They're like, you're choking. You suck. And it was the two students in the student section there. Yeah. There were two students, these two yeah. guys. 
Yeah. And they, they were yelling at me the whole game. And I, you know, I was staring at them the whole game, just fuming because I was on the bench. I, I had foul trouble and, and we were down big and, and they kept doing the sign to me. And like I said, I was young. I was just a kid. I, and, and definitely let the emotions get the best of me in that moment. But we had a sweet comeback. I got to hit him with the choke sign. It just had to be on ESPN. Uh, <laughs> there were a few moments like that for you. <laughs> uh, and, and I think, you know, I think I got caught on camera doing a couple of things that year, you know, talking to the crowd and saying things I shouldn't have said. And at, at a certain point, I don't know if it was after this game or after St. Mary's at home when two guys got ejected, at least one, one for hitting me in the face. I think Coach Rose, we were watching film and Coach Rose just like, Eric, I don't know what you're doing, but you got to just take it easy. man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you always have something to say. He's like, I can't even defend you anymore. You got to, you got to start cleaning it up. Stop fighting everybody out there. Um, but yeah, awesome game. Great rivalry. You know, that first year I went two and zero against them. And then my last year at BYU, uh, they sent me out with an O and three, even though we, we had split with Gonzaga, you know, so, so very good team. I think, I, last I saw, they were ranked 22. I don't know if they've moved yeah. up since then, but yeah. The, um, well, they're 22, but they're like top 10 in net and defensive yeah. efficiency. Like they are underrated. They are. Yeah, they're just like yeah, exactly. It, it's those like, it's just that system, you know. Randy Bennett knows what he's doing. Um, they're like a well-oiled machine. So even when they're not not good, you know, they're down years. They're still like a a really solid team um, that might just be uh you know developing or getting used to one another a little bit young whatever it is but um yeah it's a big one and, and I know we we let that Gonzaga game slip at home so you know I hope I hope we can pull it off on Saturday I don't even remember the fact that you went 0-3 that year against St. Mary's I just remember the number one the undefeated the yeah, that's all, that's, 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 that was an under. unbelievable moment like I would argue that's the best win over Gonzaga ever from BYU yeah, I mean, I I did. You're down I, eighteen I, to I, two, right? Yeah, that was part of the reason it was so great. You know, there were a lot of reasons, but that was definitely one of them. Really, really rocky start for us. Uh, couldn't buy a bucket. I did like the one. What year? Maybe two. That was it. Two thousand twenty, where they just kind of sh like shellacked them from start to start to end. I mean, that team was just the greatest team that. We don't know what would have happened, you know, unfortunately. But yeah, being on the 27 or 2016, whatever, 17 one. Yeah. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased. That was that was a fun game. Yeah. People still, people still I mean, that's what that's what they know me by, you know. Yeah. You're the guy that beat Gonzaga. Yeah. yeah. No, it was it was special. I, I believe you're the first two and done in BYU history as well. Two years. Big time. And a lot after, of after the stuff. A yeah. lot of first. A lot, a lot of first. Uh, first, yeah. first triple double. <laughs> Let's first go. Two and done. Let's go. Um, and I love that moment with St. Mary's back to that because the both teams have traded those moments, right? Yeah, it's yeah. still the dagger. It's wall to throw in the mouthpiece. It's you at the choke sign. Like those are rivalry moments. Like yeah, I know, I know it's, it's you're yeah. like I was a candidate. I'm like I, I love know that. But, I but love that's the, why. I, yeah, that's why I brought it up because like I didn't I didn't realize the gravity of it until we won. You know, and so going into it, I was you know. In the middle of the game, I was mad. I was like, who are these guys? And then by the end of it, I was like, okay, I get it. And I hate them. And that's why I'm going to do this choke sign back to them. You know, and, and from then on, it just, you know, I never, never, uh, you know, undervalued or, or uh, yeah, went into any of these WCC games, like, the same. Because I was like, man, this is, like, good basketball. It's intense. Like, every single one of our opponents is going to give us our their best shot, you know as they do, you know, to Gonzaga and, um, yeah, so a lot of fun. And it's sports hate. It's not real hate, which is not cool. It's sports right. hate. Like of Bill course. Simmons talks about it. It's sports hate. He's like, I hate right. the Lakers. I don't want the people who are the Lakers. I just hate the right. Lakers. Yeah, it's all yeah, good. I mean, yeah, you, you come across that all the time where you, you know, you hate somebody during the game and then the second it ends, you actually talk to them. I mean, they're the same as the rest of your teammates. They're the same as you. Yeah. Like, nothing's different it's just they're wearing a different jersey yeah it's, it's compete let's compete and then we're done um yeah. okay last question BYU in the big 12 what do you think of kind of this this move for the Cougars uh starting next season it's certainly in basketball going to be a, a massive opportunity and challenge 
Yeah, uh, very exciting. I really, really like it. Um, I, you know, I think the consensus is that football, you know, hopefully has some footing right away. You know, they've been playing a lot of these teams anyways. Um, not a lot of these teams, but some of these teams. So I think they they have some quote unquote experience in the Big 12. And I'm excited for that. Um and basketball, yeah, I mean basketball, like it's it's unreal. It's the best bat, you know, statistically proven the best basketball conference. Um, I think at some point I was looking at a tweet talking about this would have been two or three weeks ago. You know, there were like 10, 10 of the big 12 teams had like, I don't know, 10 of the top 15 net spots or something like that. Like something absurd. All 10 are in the top 75. Yeah. I mean, there All you 10. go. Like, and, and we're deep in the season, you know, so it's not like, it's no joke, you know, night in and night out. It's going to be really hard. Even the bottom of the big 12 is going to be a really, really well coached, probably super experienced basketball team. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough, but I think it's going to bring BYU to another level. And, you know, they have, they have the tools necessary. And if they don't have them right now, then they're going to, you know, continue to build in the next, I would imagine six months, you know, adding a little bit of staff and, but they have the facility, they have great coaching staff. Um, You know, the administrative side is, is awesome. So I'm really excited for it. I think there for sure will be some growing pains as, there always is with with any team going to a big time conference like that, um, but it's going to be fun to watch. Well, good luck against Salt Lake City Stars Thank and you. another Lone Peak guy in Frank Jackson. Yep. That's kind of fun. Frankie J, uh, yeah, got to take it to it. We played against them uh, at least three times, maybe four, and he hasn't played yet. He he's he had mm. some sicknesses, and I think he had like a foot thing, but. I believe he's playing tomorrow, um, so that'll be fun to to reunite. Okay, good talking to you. Best best of luck. Thanks, Eric. Hey, thank you. Good talking to you, Jeremy. Always good to catch up with uh, Eric Mika. Fun to hear the story behind the, the joke sign. <laughs> you know, he's right though. Like, it's it's funny. Like, the, you mentioned that you guys talk about like the sports hate. Yeah. You know, just battles and things get super ugly on the court, and then as soon as the game's over, everyone's like hugging and like talking, like, "Hey, you know, it's uh, next time you're in town." It, it, and there are it guys is funny that how don't that works. genuinely get along. We're not going right. to act like yeah. everything's uh, hunky dory here, but um, it, just hilarious. And Dave saying, "I can't defend you anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to fight everybody." I loved Eric Meek at BYU. I yes. think we all did. I I was so sad when he left because he's got a fun personality, tremendous player. He's had a really nice professional career. Played a game for the Kings uh, a couple years ago. Kind of checked that box of, hey, I made it to the NBA. Certainly we'd like more guys in the N- NBA, Shep, at some point. But BYU guys are, are having really nice professional careers overseas. And in, we've seen there are, there's more to life than the NBA with basketball. And he's in a good spot. He's yeah. on a high-profile team, certainly with Scoot. Uh, Sterling, by the way, is his yeah. actual name. Yeah. I like to call him Sterling. Everyone else calls him Scoot. Scoot Henderson could be the number two pick in the draft. Yes, but I mean, like, he's on a high-profile team. People are watching them all the time. So hopefully yep. that that uh, helps up his brand and yeah. the way he's playing. Certainly taking notice uh, from other from other teams, and we'll see what happens. Certainly, we wish the best of luck to him. Yeah, they take on the Salt Lake City Stars uh, tonight in Vegas. There you go. Join Greg Rubel and Mark Durant on Saturday as 22nd-ranked St. Mary's comes to the Marriott Center to face the BYU Cougars. Listen, Saturday coverage begins 9 Eastern time with Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio. Who is the second-best NBA player from BYU? Danny Ings is the obvious number one. Why did the Athletic call BYU a loser? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere.
If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Home is just about to get a whole lot happier. So you've been living with no furniture for about two months. Well, we're about to change that for you. Watch as helpful folks lend a hand to those in need. See them refurbish and replenish homes all over the world. Caitlin left her house when she was 13, and now she's finally home. With all kinds of shows to explore on the BYU TV app, you're sure to find loads your family can watch together. Stream them all for free. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jason Born Identity, and I am Jerem. Let's whip it. The Google Whip Around is presented by Marist, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. The Athletics' Justin Williams and Sam Kahn Jr. wrote up the uh, Big 12 winners and losers in the transfer portal. Here's what they had to say about the Cougars. Uh, the Cougars, this is a quote, the Cougars saw a ton of talent and production depart up and down the depth chart. Gone are both Barrington brothers and Holker on offense. The defense lost starting uh, cornerback Judy Lolly and linebacker Peely to Tennessee. Rami to Arizona State and Fano to rival Utah. Splash additions, Slovis and Robbins should provide a notable offensive boost. BYU also replenished the trenches with Miley and Fitzgerald up front and Bagna and Cravens on the defensive side from Boise State. But all of them have large vacancies to fill. It wasn't a completely lopsided portal experience, but the losses stand out. Verdict, loser. What do you think about that? What's your reaction to uh, the transfer being called a transfer portal loser? Don't like that. Uh, used to being called that, but don't like that. Um, cer certainly, um, on paper, more talent left than came in, although a lot came in. Mm -hmm. But a lot went out. Um, and BYU, But again, there are other guys who we just don't know about yeah. quite yet. But it is hard to replace a Clark Barrington. Like, you're always not going to bring in someone who's better than Clark. But someone could develop to become as good as Clark, perhaps later. So that I understand why they say that. I just don't like that particular vehicle. Yeah, when we had this discussion, and then it was, I think it was Spencer and I that actually had this discussion a week or two ago, you know, it was the, the net positive, net negative. That's, I, that's, that's more friendly yes, phrasing. Yeah, like I, I, was ever, Loser. I was ever so net negatively at the time simply because of the offensive line. Well, since then, my lay has come in. I, look, it may sound like a cop-out, but I think it's more even than it is net positive or net negative at this point. I agree with the athletic uh, that more went out than came in, but that's all right. A lot came in. Okay, speaking of the athletic, Andy Staples tweeted the following. We examined some of the factors that got missed about Brock Purdy in an attempt to find the next later round gem of a quarterback. Of course, Brock, Mr. Irrelevant, winning with the Niners, undefeated, he's the next big deal. Could it be Stetson Bennett, Max Duggan, Jake Hayner, or Jaron Hall? Could Jaron find himself in a conference championship game next season? Look, you never you know. Imagine? Nobody thought Brock Purdy was going to, number one, they probably never thought he was going to play, let alone be on this winning streak and leading his team to a possible Super Bowl opportunity. So, yeah, I mean, is it possible? Sure. You just never know. It comes down to our conversation yesterday. If you go to the right place, it's the right fit, and you have an opportunity to play, you never know. The Seahawks are that team. Uh, just, just right there. No, Geno Smith set, like, franchise records in – Completion percentage and yards, and it was still a first-round exit. The Niners were a quarterback away from being amazing. Yeah, They have a great defense, great skill position players. They added McCaffrey. That old line's really good. Man, and he's played great. It's not just like you just plug anybody in there. It's right. like, no, no, no. This guy was a capable, really good quarterback at Iowa State. Where Iowa State won the league in 2020, don't forget. And he's a, Iowa State! And he is a perfect fit for what Kyle Shanahan wants 
out of a quarterback. He does not Let's want. Let's go offense. The, yes. Check it down. He wants a guy that's going. To, he doesn't need a flashy guy. Yeah. Find George Kittle over the he's, he's He wants a guy that's going to follow the game plan, and that's what Purdy does. All right. Our guy, uh, Big Game Boomer, released a list of the greatest NBA players of all time from every school. Obviously, Danny Ainge was listed for BYU. Who would you have second? Probably Sean Bradley. Uh, second most games played. Really tenured. Obviously, a gajillion blocks. Dunked on people, got dunked on, but he challenged, right? Probably Sean Bradley, although I was led to consider others. Because it's been a long time ago, we don't credit these people as much as they probably should be, but I want to with Mel Hutchins, second pick in the draft, four-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year. Only he and Wilt Chamberlain at the time, um, you know, back in the day, had led in rebounding as rookies in the NBA. Jim Eakins played for over a decade, ABA, NBA as well. Um, and average double figures for six of those. Those those two guys are in the mix when you look at all the numbers from NBA dudes from BYU. I agree. The answer is is probably Sean Bradley for a couple of different reasons. Number one, um, the the fact is high where he was drafted is how high he was drafted. Um, the other, and, and this obviously doesn't mean a whole lot, but in terms of earnings. He was in the league and signed some pretty hefty contracts. He was in the league a Sean's long time. Sean's got to be the richest yes, Cougar. Yes, with, without question. Yep. Yes, absolutely. So I, I think what I think what Sean Bradley did, look, when, when, when the Nets were in town the other night to play the Jazz, they were talking about a record that Nick Claxton was about to break, held currently uh, by Sean Bradley. He had 11 straight games with at least three blocks. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, oh. yeah, the answer is probably Sean Bradley. Yeah. Um, and he was in Space Jam. Uh, both and Danny Church Ainge. Ball. And Danny Ainge. And don't you dare put those two in the same conversation. <laughs> the Jets have hired Nathaniel Hackett as the new offensive coordinator. Good hire for Zach Wilson? Um, yes, I actually do like this. Look, Nathaniel, why it's Nathaniel and not Nate, Nate or Nate? Nate dog. Yeah. Nathaniel Hackett's issue was not a, a, a coordinator problem. I realize the Bronco offense was horrid, except when they played the Chiefs. I don't, it's weird. Uh, but his, he was he was not a head coach is what the problem was. He's had success as an offensive coordinator. I like this. Uh, I like this a lot, as a matter of fact. And who knows, if uh, if one Aaron Rodgers comes over, maybe Zach can learn behind a guy that's got his back. Robert Sala, <laughs> nice. Re uh, Robert Sala mentioned that, no, this isn't a ploy to get any other quarterback. But if it happens. But uh, Andy Vasquez, who covers the Jets, uh, tweeted, Sala said he uh, talked to Packard and told him we we're planning to bring in a veteran if we can, while still continuing to work with Zach Wilson. So they didn't talk about specific names of veteran quarterbacks. That'd be the ideal thing. Bring in a veteran. It works out great. Uh, Zach can develop and get an opportunity. Hopefully. Yes. We'll see. I don't necessarily trust that the Jets are actually going to give Zach another chance. Well, remember, LaFleur. I don't know if the fans want him to have LaFleur, his, his, his offensive coordinator he's had for the last two seasons, first time offensive coordinator. He had not had that. He was the quarterback's coach in, in San Francisco. Jets. First time OC, uh, yeah. these were not yeah. good, uh, you know, the, the soil wasn't super fertile there for Zach, but Zach's got to play better too. Yes. I'm not 100%. saying it wasn't yep. Zach, like I talked about on yesterday's show. Sometimes you got to look at that. All right, friend of the program and extra points writer Matt Brown writes about a non-denominational church hosting an autograph session with Notre Dame athletes after services sponsored by a local realtor. <laughs> Is this something that BYU should look into? Like, uh, I don't know, having lunch or after the linger longer, you know, sign some autographs? I mean, come on. Is, is, this, is this a way to maybe get the NIL going a little bit more? You fans will love this idea. You add to the tithing slip. It's like, there's like a new line. Fund, Book of Mormon, humanitarian aid, <laughs> BYU athletes. <laughs> No. no tithing funds go no. to athletics. None. Of course not. Um, yeah, that's interesting to, to have a church like the Utah Warriors rugby team actually signed like Chaz Ayu mm -hmm. and Jaron and Kingsley Suamatia last year. So it was like a team with another team. Went out a church. Uh, there's a church associated here. Look, you are not going to get me to speak ill of Linger Longers. My <laughs> wife and I had our first real conversation at a Linger Longer. Very nice. And here we are, four now kids you're later. still lingering. <laughs> yep. And she's like, yeah, you are lingering. Yes. Like, it was barely worth it. <laughs> okay, coming up, we set our fantasy basketball lineup. Can I get to 8 and 0? Oh? No. None well so far. No. Lauren Gustin, doing work. This is BOE Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner.
Whether you want to rock your retirement on the court, on the snow, on the waves, or in the gym. At Mountain America, we're here to help you get things rolling. Learn more at macu.com slash retirement. Mountain America, guiding you forward. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven, nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. feel the energy of all these volunteers. I'm excited to get out into the world and see who else is making good. And you're going to meet some of the most amazing people. And we will all just lift each other up. What we do is we create memories for families. And you realize just how good people are. It does take a village. It's definitely been a journey. Sports Nation live in Studio B alongside Jamie Jordan, Jason Shepard. Time to set our basketball fantasy lineups for this week. I'm 7 0 on the season so far. Thank you, Lauren Gustin and Foose, mainly. Uh, we picked two men's players, two women's players, and one player from the opponent. We track points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. It's called PARBS. So here we go, transaction time. What's Spencer's transaction? Yes, yeah, Spencer is sending his sealed and secure transaction for well, this not week. Anymore. Well, I have it now. Yes. I've unsealed it's it. It's digitally unsealed. But now I have it, NFT yes. Or uh, he's picking up Mitchell Saxon okay. from St. Mary's. So Saxon will join Spencer's current roster, Gideon George, Spencer Johnson, Nani Falatea, and Ari Mackie Williams. Did you ever see the Winnie the Pooh movie that came out like a decade ago? The Baxon? The Saxon? Mitchell the Saxon. Apparently not. No? Okay. Okay, uh, we're going to go to, uh, you know, Christopher Robbins land with Lauren Gustin, Kaylee Smiler, Foose, Rudy Williams. They've been great. I will pick up St. Mary's leading scorer, Aiden Mahaney. You're going with the guy, game. the freshman phenom. 15 a game. He leads the Gales in scoring. He's going to be the WCC newcomer of the year. He's fantastic. Looks, looks like uh, he's 16. He's probably only 18. He's from two miles away, by the way. Homies with Randy Bennett's son, who's also on the team. Kind of a fun story there. So that is my crew. I'm 7-0. One eight in a row after the bowl game win because Jaron Hall didn't play. Let's see if that streak continues. Big games for women's basketball tonight at St. Mary's Pacific uh, at Pacific Saturday. And then, of course, men's hoops Saturday against the Gales. And the final game is WCC teams in the Marriott Center. You always won four in a row, by the way. Yeah, looking at for, home against St. Mary. That's right, looking for five in a row against the Gales. Look, and this is a big stretch for BYU women's basketball as well. You yep. mentioned going on the road for three. This weekend, you've got obviously a game tonight and then Saturday. And now you're facing, these are two teams that you beat during the seven game winning streak already. St. Mary's yes. by 25. And so here. now you're getting them the second time. You're starting to see these teams for a second time through. And now you go to their place. Interested to see how this team bounces back from the 10 point loss on Saturday. Hopefully, you only lost once. Yep. Right? Yep. Not carry over. Let's go. All right, if you missed any of our BYU TV sports interviews, shows, or games, or hey, you just want to watch them all over again, go to BYUSN.com or download the BYU TV app to get all the BYU TV sports content on demand. After the break, who gets today's rise and shout out? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. 
this mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU sports, it's all about the fans. BYU men's hoops dreams are flying high. But before hitting the hardwoods of the Big 12, they're shooting to leave their royal blue imprint on the courts of the WCC. Join us for BYU Sports Nation game day as we chatted up with Coach Pope on the team's growth, dive deep into player profiles, and keep it real on the Cougs' big dance chances. It's time to raise the spirited Y banner on our final tour of the WCC. BYU Sports Nation game day. Tune in, join us. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app or listen to the podcast. Please subscribe, rate, and review while you're there. I believe BYU has that Big 12 logo on Lavelle Edwards Stadium field on the turf in Springville. That's going to be a monumental moment for yours be, truly right here. We'll go watch them paint it. And I, it just honestly, like a little I was going to say, if you get yeah. a close-up, yeah. like there may be a tear. Like it, right it may, now? Like, can you cry on demand, by the way? No, but you know what you can do on demand? Listen to the podcast. Nice! Yeah. Our question, transition. That's why they pay the bucks. Our question of the day is this. Should BYU's focus in football be on recruiting four-star high school players or transfers? The elite voice of the day is presented by PAX, Healthcare Elevated, BYU Bomber on Twitter. In my opinion, uh, opinion four star transfers are better served. They have college experience, should be better prepared to contribute immediately. BYU football is a special place, which lends itself more to wiser veteran players with more life experience. I think for the win now part, yes. Yes. And then some balance would certainly be uh, great. In fact, some imbalance of a few good transfers with some incoming freshmen who are developing look, would be look, nice. Look, in one year, maybe more of one, and the other year, maybe it's going to, yeah. you hope it evens out, like you said. Today's Rise and Shout Out is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics, to Eric Mika for explaining the story behind the choke sign in Moraga all those years ago. And a nice, uh, nice red beard. Yeah. 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 It's like a lumberjack. Our thanks to today's guest, Eric Me. All right, conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Sorry to Dennis, we ran out of time. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Don Overly. Go Cougs!